Thank you. Hvala, Jules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Excellencies. Incidentally, this sum summit and this debate comes only a few days after the meeting of Southeast European Cooperation Process in Montenegro, where, for the first time, pr probably the usual, if not ritual, political debate about the state of play in the region was complemented by the growing awareness that time has come to transpond, to translate political cooperation into the realm of concrete economic cooperation in Southeastern Europe. In my mind, there are several obvious reasons for that. First, of course, prolonged effect of the economic crisis with profound impact on many national economies in the region. Second, growing recognition that the EU enlargement policy now, after Croatia, and of course I joined the cooperative relations, may face additional difficulties in the immediate future, so that accelerated economic recovery and development may be the best, if not the only answer to political and social expectations, if not frustrations in the future. Thirdly, true positive impact of the reconciliation, rapprochement, moderation and pragmatism in the region that is taking root in the region, and now that calling for policies that would ensure irreversibility and full consolidation of this positive current trend, including through joint efforts to face economic challenges. Last but not least, under current fears that in the light of developments <coughs> in North Africa and Middle East, international focus, and of course in also international attention of the international financial institutions may be turning towards the robust support of democ democracy building and stabilization of these markets, thus moving our region down the investment agenda. Against this background, what would be the most important challenges for the region to create an investment-friendly climate? And how the regional cooperation platforms, such as the Regional Cooperation Council, could assist in this process? In my mind, first imperative, of course, is undoubtedly profiling our region as durably stable and predictable region, namely through urgent resolution of the critically important residual open issues. I strongly personally believe that this is really a high noon for the region to resolve uh, uh, these uh, uh, several open and critically important uh, open issues. Second, second imperatives would include, of course, rule of law, security for the investment and stability of the current positive political trends. Third imperative, as it was mentioned during the debate already, regional partnership and regional cooperation for recovery and economic development. Substantial international financial in injections are hard to come to the region if intra-regional cooperation is not translated into a concrete regional project. From the RCC point of view, on the political level, what we are trying to put across is the message of the urgency regarding the open issues, and we are working also very hard to ensure all inclusiveness as the ground rule of cooperation in the region, which is, you will understand, uh, uh, critically important in the light of many inherited differences among our members. In the field of rule of law, the RCC's contribution is evident by a fact that by now, the region, as the unique region in Europe, has adopted a common strategy to fight organized crime and corruption by increased and regular cooperation among justice and home affairs authorities, prosecutors, and many other relevant stakeholders in that sector. As for the security sector, by now, under the RCC auspices, we have developed a very elaborated network of cooperation of the defense sector among the uh, intelligence agencies, including, to a great surprise, including the military intelligence cooperation. As for adding bricks to the consolidation of current positive political trends by broadening the participants so as to include various stakeholders from all sectors of our societies, just by way of illustration, now we have the universities cooperating, for example, by shared doctoral studies program. Car cultural cooperation in the region is on the rise. There is a regional research and development strategy. The implementation of the single European sky in the region is also, has also started. An association of public broadcasters has been established. In September, we will have the first educational, editorial ed education training starting and so forth. And I could go on enumerating uh, dozens of projects of this, uh, of this nature. Last but not least, maybe it will be a, a, a topic uh, of our debate also, uh, the process of transfer of the investment compact from the OECD to the RCC is to be concluded in the, in the near future. In conclusion, all these steps taken by the RCC and by the region represent an accumulated platform to help reprofile re the region and thus help its potential to attract necessary investment. But in addition, given the urgency of the situation and against the backdrop of current positive political trends, what we need mostly is to pool our will and 
our resources around strategically focused and forward-moving regional project in infrastructure, energy, and transportation sector so as to re rekindle national economies, meet some long-standing underdevelopment needs shared by practically all of our countries, and fit these projects into broader EU strategies for infrastructure, energy, and transportation. Thank you.